Hello everybody, welcome back to Vendorbots. I'm James and today we're going to look at creating a chair. Um, so I thought it'd be great to show you guys how to start modeling inside of Cinema 4D. And this is what we're going to aim to do today. Um, I've got a little picture up here to show you. There you go. It's just a chair. And we're going to learn a few tools along the way building this. So hopefully we can have some fun. So let's dive straight in and build a chair. So let's uh, let's first of all grab a primitive here. We're going to grab hold of this cube like so. So here it is. Here's our cube. Now I need my camera tool to go around that. We've seen this cube before. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this cube very small. I'm going to grab hold of this area here and just drag it down to there like that. Okay, second thing is we're going to go to display and turn on this button here and what this does is shows us all of the polygons in the scene. Now if we zoom up really close you see straight away it shows me the edge here. Now what I need to do is segment all this so I can start extruding elements out of it. Now to do that I'm going to go over to my area here where my cube is and actually start to divide this into segments. So if I click on this little wand here, boom, boom, Ah, cool, four, okay. So we want four there, and we want four here. One, two, three, that's it. And let's give us four, because obviously the one was made already. So as we look over this area now, we see we've got those four. Um, well, yeah, split four before, okay. Which is great, so this is gonna be the base of our chair. Now, what we need to do now is we're gonna look underneath it, because we wanna be able to start to extrude these um, areas here. Okay, so to do that, what we're going to do is we have to make this editable. So once we make it editable, we can't add any more of these segments. We've got to be really careful how we do this. Um, so I'm happy with the way it is. I've done this demo before, so this should be working great. So with that done, we're going to press our edit, make editable tag here. And as you see, it says shortcut C. Um, so give it a press. Now, initially, nothing changes. Okay. Nothing changes at all. But what it means now is if I go over here, I can click on my flat polygon tool here. This is going to let me now light up any area across here. Pretty cool, right? So I can go along now and select any edge I want just by hovering over it. So for this example, we want to make a chair. So I'm looking to extrude this, 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 and this out. Now to do that, what I need to do is highlight all these areas at the same time. So to do that, what I'm going to do is hold, give it a click, okay? And I'm going to hold down um, Shift as I select all those different areas. So I hold down Shift, give it a click here, 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 and here. Okay, so that we've got those highlighted. As you notice, I've not got the top, it's just the bottom that's done. So we hold down Shift, click, 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 and let go of Shift, and as you see, they're now highlighted. I'm now free to take my finger off the Shift key, and I can, um, start to model it. Now, what I need to do is look at and try and find the extrude um, key. Now, if we go across all here, we can't find it. So I'm going to show you a little shortcut. If you press the M key, M for mother, and we'll see all these really cool options here. Now, if I move the cursor, you'll see it kind of um, gets rid of the menu. So M, and it gives us all these options here. Now, what we're looking for is extrude. Um, this is going to be the T key for me. But as you see, there's a whole ton of stuff in there. We're going to look at some of these other ones later on. So let's press T. Fantastic. Now, our icon is now changed. You see this little where the arrow is there? And all I'm going to do is click and hold my, hold my mouse button down and drag away. Cool, right? And they're all coming down at the same time. Yes. Very good. Okay. Once I let go... Um, you'll see that it's giving me exactly what I want there. Now, if I click and hold again, see it kind of puts little feet on there. It actually does like another reset of the polygon. So it's kind of like knifed its way all the way through there. It's pretty good, right? Okay, so what I need to do now is do the same at the back of here. Okay, so um, let's go back to uh, the selection tool. We've got the polygon tool highlighted there. Again, I'm going to hold down the shift key and click and click, press M and then T. 
And this time we're going to extrude it in the other other directions. Whoa, what happened there? <laughs> Let's try that again. So we're going to give it a click there. Give it a click there. Press M and then T for extrude. And we're going to drag it back up there. There you go. It's worked perfectly this time. This is going to be the back of our chair. Okay, I'm happy with that. Should be about half and half. Cool, right? So there's the start of our chair. It's looking pretty good. Okay. Now, what I want to do is want to build an area here. Now, if I go back to my selection tool there, as you see, it stops it, um, you know, um, let me extrude anything else. Go back to my uh, polygon tool there. Cool. Um, I could obviously bring in another cube and sort of scale it down and, and do all this kind of stuff and lift it up and drag this back here. Yeah, we could, we could do that. Um, but I want to show you another tool, so I'm just going to delete that. And what we're going to do is look at something called the knife tool. And the knife tool is going to allow me to kind of slice across here and slice across, across here. And by doing that, we can then bridge the gap between the two. So let's have a look at how we're going to do that. So let's zoom in close, again, using my camera tools to do so. And I'm going to press the M key like we did before. And we're looking for the K for uh, knife key. OK, K for knife. And what we want to do is we want to be able to select um, this, these areas here. So go back to the polygon tool here. So uh, K for knife. And we'll see down here, it shows me a knife key and the mode is set to line. So click on the line mode and we're going to make it loop. OK, because as you can see now, I can now cut through any I want. Just another thing we're going to do is we're going to restrict to selection. Uncheck that. OK, cool. Now what we do is uh, kind of line this up and give it a click there. Come across here and give it a click uh, there like that. Isn't that cool? So it's just cut all the way through that polygon. OK, cool. It's another tool for your arsenal, guys. <laughs> OK. Now, we need to now select these two faces here and, and bridge the gap. So to do that, we're going to go to our selection tool. We've got polygon highlighted again. And what we're going to do is I'm going to give it a click there. You see it turns orange straight away. And as before, hold down the shift key and click there. All right, so as you see, they're both now highlighted. And what I'm looking to do is bridge the gap between the two. So M. And we see B for bridge, right? So M and then B. And now we get another funky key. So OK, so what you're going to do this number do is to kind of grab this and drag it across. See, we've done that. Grab the edge and drag it across. Once I let go, so I've clicked and hold and dragged across. And you see, where do we want this polygon to line up with? Well, I want this edge to line up with this edge. Once I let go, boom, look at that. Created the polygon. Hurrah. Now. Let's go close, because what I want to do is kind of, again, kind of knife these two together and drag it down and create that kind of um, back to the chair. So um, we're going to go to the K. Um, let's go back up here. K for knife tool. Again, uh, I want to make sure polygons are highlighted there. Uh, make sure it's stuck to loop which it is, so I know I'm going around a bit quick, guys, but I want to slow down for you. So mode is loop, okay, so make sure loop. Restriction is off. And again, I'm looking to create a, a new cut inside of here, so give it a click there, and a click like that there. Again, no real science to it, just trying to line it up there for me. And then finally, we need to kind of select this area again, so go back up to my selection key. Click on all these areas like this, and I want to actually grab hold of this. Okay, so give it a click. Now remember, before we go to M, and then um, T for extrude. Click, drag my cursor, uh, my uh, my mouse away, and as you see, it starts to intersect with the with that bit there. Perfect. When I let go, boom! There you go. There's our funky chair. Cool, now let's have a look back at the picture um, I created. Let's go back to my selection tool like that. Let's go and have a look at um, the the, uh, the image I created, and it looks, looks like this. So as you can see, this is actually um, all rounded, whereas uh, my example's a little bit square and blocky. And the reason for this is we did a subdivide 
um, of the of the model. So to do that, what we have to do is you see we've got one element here. It's a cube. We've made this fantastic chair. Look at that. That's pretty good, right? So what we do is we're going to come up to here and we see the word subdivide surface. Okay, now what that does is it's going to create lots and lots of polygons to fill all of these polygon holes. And by doing that, it makes our model rounded. So we grab hold of our cube, click and hold and drag and drop. Badoosh, look at that. Fabulous. Yeah, looking pretty good. So there you go, there's our little chair. Now to um, kind of finish the scene off, we want to texturize. Let's hit the render key and see what that looks like. There you go, looks pretty good. Now what's cool is if I want to change any elements of this, I can untick this area like so, and we go back straight to sort of the polygon mode before we like even started. So we can make any adjustments that I want to make um, back to the model if I wanted to change anything. If not, click back on there. There's my um, uh, subdivided polygon. And as you can see, it's really made all the edges kind of um, nice and round. Looks like I properly modeled it, it looks pretty good. So to finish this off, we're gonna um, put a floor on it. So let's see you have the whole scene. So we uh, selected the plane, click on the green, let's drag it down like so. Okay, go to this area here. This is gonna help me extend uh, the length of that. There you go, ramp that up. And now we do is looking at making a texture for the chair. So to do that, come down into our texture window here, give it a double click. Boosh, like that, it comes up with a mat. Give that a double click. Comes up the word color. Let's click on the color and let's make it a nice bright red. Cool. Um, reflection, let that come down about mm, so much like that. Again, just click and we can drag it here, remember, or we can drag it onto the uh, the chair like that. Either way, press render. Okay, cool, and we see some nice reflections going on the side there. Uh, click and hold. Boosh, and we see that kind of reflecting back in the chair. So what we do now is, is obviously uh, put a texture onto the floor. Now to do this, I normally you know go and find an image that I want to use and, and drop on the floor. So a good one is called uh, sort of floorboards. If you go to Google and uh, type in floorboards, you'll find lots of images. Or even take a photograph of your floor at home, and you can use it as a photograph and bring it in to this. Okay. So again, I'm going to my material window. Double click here. Gives me a nice grey matte material. Double click that and see the word color. We're on the word color and go through that. See the word texture, come all the way to the end there, give it a click. And on my desktop, I have texture wallpaper just there. Press open. Um, do I want to copy that? I'm going to say no. We can take off spectacular, specular if you like. Spectacular, I like the words. It should be called spectacular, right? <laughs> okay, so we need specular. Uh, give it a click. Um, and then simply click and drag this onto here, or if you want to be really professional, drag it and drop it onto there. Okay, now let's hit our render button. Okay, looking somewhere near like my picture now. Yeah, um, so what's what the problem here is, is it's all about your lighting. So let's grab a hold of a light, and this is this icon here. Give it a click. Now straight away, the light appears here in our window. So I need to move this upwards, so let's click and hold and drag up like that. So it's almost above it. Let's press render now. Ooh, looking good. Um, but actually, this light has many attributes to it. Okay. Um, I want to do is go to the light tool here and we'll see the word under general. Come down, it's got light type is omni, so omnidirectional. And actually I want to build um, not an omni, but maybe a spotlight. Okay, so I've clicked on the word spot. When we come up to our scene, the scene goes black, don't panic. It just means, as you can see, our light, our little spotlight is pointing in the wrong area. We need to get this to point downwards. To do that, we go to our rotation tool here. Click on the red bit and drag down. Now, as you see in real time, it starts to um, properly starts to light up our scene. Look at that, it's good, right? And we can obviously, we could animate this if we wanted to. Um, so I'm going to drag it down to there. Um, I've hit my model tool over here. And this gives me these little orange um, markers in the floor here. So by doing that, I can click and grab and drag that out like so. See that? It's really good. And it's got this really nice floor, uh, fall off of that scene as well. Yeah. Now when I hit render now, boosh, really cool. But wait, wait a minute. We're missing something. 
and that is um, we've got some nice reflections in the arms in the legs there but we've got no shadows we've got light there's no shadows so to get shadows we need to go back to our light come all the way through to here and we see the word shadow and it says none okay so we're going to set this to shadow map soft give that a click let's press our render button there you go much better much better there you go and that is our first bit of modeling in cinema 4d it's pretty good right it's not bad at all um and as you see we, we grab all of these primitives and we can create lots of different shapes you know it, it's so good and uh, hopefully the tools i've just shown you there should give you um some idea of building um something else to go with our chair we we'll probably make a little city of them you know again in my little picture all i did let's get rid of that cube we don't want that um all we do is grab hold of our, our chair um in this case command c and then command v on a mac and that gives us a copy and click and hold and drag over to the right again i want to create a new material for this um if i just press render you see it starts to fall off it gives us some real accurate light in there um to give this a new color as opposed to trying to build the whole thing again if i grab hold the mac key if i hold down uh, command and drag you see it gives us a new texture it's quite cool if you didn't know that this means if i double click that texture there go to the color click on the color swatch make that bright yellow press ok it gives us a nice new color click and drag that onto the model and then render like so there you go so um <clears throat> a good few models there okay cool so um that's it for this lesson i hope you enjoyed that that was pretty good we learned um to um make a cube editable we learned how to um find a little uh, hidden menu with the m key and then a t for extrude and then we had the knife tool and making sure it's set to the loop and then um, a B for bridge, right? That was a kind of a, a really cool tool. Um, thank you very much to all of you who subscribed to my YouTube channel. I really appreciate it and know how much it means to me. Um, please get in contact with any ideas for tutorials that you want to know about Cinema 4D. Um, you can find me on Twitter at render underscore bots, or it's down here. Or you can email me directly at james at renderbots.co.uk. Until next time, guys, thank you very much. Happy rendering. Take care. Bye-bye.